Tonight is January the 12th of 2016. Got my year right this time. Lately I've been doing that wrong. And what I'm doing tonight is I've been um, working with my uh, uh, triode amplifiers. Let me see if I can turn these things around and show you. I love these old triode amplifiers. This one uses um, some of those red bass. This is a 6SL7, 6SN7. And a pair of six B four Gs, the all original ones with the, you know, the direct heated filaments. There's another one right down here. If you can see that one, it's it's the same design really. Six S L seven, six S N, and two six uh, B four Gs, but it's got a solid state power supply. They sound great. I can't explain it, but anyway. Uh, in one of them I had some instabilities especially at low frequencies caused by the feedback and so I said well I'll measure a standard amplifier this is the old uh, venerable Dynaco Mark 3 uses the you know the 6550s 6, GZ34 6AN8 very original um, so I thought, well, I'll measure the feed. How much negative feedback, how much global feedback do they use? <clears throat> and I thought I would share this with you guys and show you what they do and how I do it. And um, I know decibels and dealing with decibels and feedback and all that stuff can be uh, kind of tricky in the beginning until you get used to it. And uh, if nothing else, this will be a uh, an adventure in... Uh, decibel calculations which will have a very simple and real world uh, application and I hope you like this okay to start out with this is a, a meter I'm going to be using right here this little tectronics meter that is a direct readout of decibels which is really nice and handy we don't have to use that because we're going to do it three different ways and they're all very quick and very easy We'll have a direct readout meter, like this guy right here, and then we'll do it by 10 times the log of the power ratios and 10 times the log of the volt or 20 times the log of the voltage ratios. You'll see just how really easy it is. And uh, again, for those of you that um, are not real familiar, astute with decibels, I bet you this is going to go, hmm, that's not so hard after all. I hope it does. That's one of the purposes of this video and the other one is to show you how much real feedback there is. Well what I'm going to do is this little yellow wire right there I've got to remember that this thing is on so I can't stick my finger in it directly this is the feedback wire right here. What I'm going to do is unsolder it. I've practiced this so this should go well. <laughs> I'm going to unsolder this and we're going to measure the power and we're going to write it down. We're also going to write down, we're going to write it down directly in decibels from the little tectronics meter. We'll write down the voltage and we'll write down the power. And we'll see that how that you get all three that make sense and it, and it all works. Okay, the first thing I got to do though is, um, is take it loose and measure the power with it off because it, it takes a whole lot less driving power to. Uh, you know to saturate the amplifier and you don't have to do it at any particular power level either so I'm going to remove this guy there's actually no high voltage at this point okay now with that removed we're going to look at three things one is right there this thing is reading 46.5 dB M I'm going to write that down 46.5 dBm. <clears throat> we'll also look up here at the power. Look at the power right there. 45 watts. Let's call that 45. And then we'll write down uh, 45. And then we'll also look at the voltage right there. 18.7 volts. And we'll write that down. Okay. 18.7 volts. Now.
now what we're going to do is hook that wire back up right there. I'm doing this carefully. I do not want you to see me get the suit knocked out of me. I'm not going to advise you to do it this way, but I'm going to do it this way because I want to. Okay, now we're going to make those same three readings again. Our power is going to have dropped considerably because of the negative feedback, and there it is. 27.24. 27.24. Our power has dropped to a half watt. 0.5284. We'll write that whole number down. 0.5284. And our voltage has dropped. Whoops, I keep knocking the wires loose. The 2.04 volts. 2.04. Okay. 2.04. Let's get back to our pad of paper. 2.04. 2.04. So, decibel gain and loss. Well, if you got a meter, then you just subtract this from that. And if we do that, if we take. Uh, Uh, 46.5 and subtract 27.24 27.24 we get 19.26 want the camera to focus on that good 19.26 so this is 19.26 that's a direct readout now since this is power it's 10 times the log base 10 of those power ratios and since it's a loss we'll put the little number on the top it doesn't matter you can put it either way if you put the little number on the top and the big number in the denominator you'll get a negative if you do it the other way around you get a positive but this but the number is the same 0 0.5284 0 0.5284 enter 45 45 divide and then we take the log of that and we multiply it times 10 and we get 19.3 minus 19.3 which is correct minus 19.3 see our direct meter said that it was 19.26 now we got 19.3 now this is the voltage I'm doing all this to show you you can do this with just with any instruments you don't have to have any fancy stuff 18.7 volts to 2.04 let's do that so we do 2.04 enter 18.7 18.7 divide we got to do the log base 10 of that and then we multiply that times 20 and we get 19.24 minus 19.24 of course this one's minus 2 but that's how much feedback there is how much global negative feedback NFB is in a Mark III amplifier 19 dB now <clears throat> with that said what I have found out in my little uh, and I hope this helps you guys if, if you're not familiar with decibels it's actually pretty easy need a calculator though wasn't so easy you know in the 1960s when you think about it but uh, this amplifier right here if I go more than about nine more than about 16 DB minus 16 DB it starts doing some very strange things to the low frequencies like at 20 Hertz the thing performs very well it's, it's pretty amazing you can get quite a bit of power out of these 6B4s more than they uh, want to tell you you can get a good 20 watts out of them you really can. Uh, this one over here too. This one will do the same thing. This one runs about 560 volts on the place. Yes, I know that's a bit high. This one runs 530. So I run the voltage up there. But they work really nice and just have a sound that that pleases me. And uh, 
I know that's been some of the discussions before is what makes an amplifier sound like it sounds and I don't know uh, I don't know it just is what it is and we like what we like I don't know a better way to say that but anyway that's what I wanted to show you tonight and uh, that is that is the old venerable mark 3 amplifier with minus 19 db of nfb oh there is one other thing i wanted to show you that i picked up the other day look at this beauty isn't that something remember that from a high school physics lab well i, I picked this thing up it's a 23 ohm and it'll handle 4.3 amps because of the wire size and I said, you know, this is going to be cool because I can just slide this thing around. I can have anything between 0 and 23 ohms as a load. So I can make uh, transformer impedance measurements and all this kind of crazy stuff I love to do. Well, guess what? This thing's not worth a hoot. This thing has so much inductance in it that it just is unusable. This thing is good for high school DC direct current physics lab experiments it's not good for AC now I made a video some time ago on wire wound versus um, non-inductive type resistors and if your resistors are made out of large wire and there's not many turns and the um, inductance is down in a few microhenries it won't make any difference but this one I measured this one this one got all the parameters uh, let's see on the GR 1650 at 1 kilohertz. The DC resistance is 23 ohms, dead ohm. AC resistance is 30 and a half ohms. Inductance is 1.62 millihenries and the Q is 0.335. Here on the ZY bridge it measures out as uh, Z equals 50 plus J30 or that's 58.3 ohms at an angle of 31 degrees. We won't get into that but it's no good. Things no good for uh, AC measurements, way too much inductance in that. Now, <clears throat> these uh, resistors, I'll show you some other resistors that work just fine because the inductance is low enough in them that, uh, that you can disregard it. And that's this guy right here. This is a one ohm resistor. I've had to use that before. One ohm, but see how big the wire is? How big that strap is? and how many turns there are the uh, well the inductance of this one actually I've written it on there see it's five micro henry's you can do X of L 2 pi of L with an L of 5 micro henry and you'll see that the amount of uh, inductive reactance in this thing is insignificant so this is okay at audio and the same thing here this is a 2 ohm let's see do I write everything on? yeah I mean it, it looks pretty big but see how broad and wide and there's not so many turns on there this one works fine it's perfectly okay for audio it's uh, 2.14 ohms AC resistance 2.08 ohms DC resistance so that's telling you right there there's very little reactance in it the inductance is 8 micro henries Q.02 that's all okay anyway that's it in a nutshell so I hope this helps and um, if you're doing feedback, you know, what you can do if you want to adjust your feedback, and probably what I'm going to do, not in this one, but in the other one, is I'm probably just going to put a variable resistor in there so I can crank in the amount of feedback that I want. Now, I don't know why they can get away with minus 19 in here, and I can't seem to make my amplifier stable at, uh, with more than about minus 16 dB feedback, but... It is what it is, and that's what I got to live with. So, hope this helps. I wanted to take this one step further for the uh, the student of decibels. Let's do something here, and I hope this will help. Because uh, I get asked these kinds of questions too often, and, and I know it's a little complicated, but it's simpler than you think. Okay, how would we relate all of these voltages, or not, not the voltage, but this decibel DBM rating to power rating to voltage rating? Okay, let's do this. 46.5 decibels 
reference to a milliwatt, if you convert decibels to bells, you just simply move this decimal place over. 46.5 dB equals 4.65 bells. Okay? Now, what do we do with that? Well, remember that 4.65. Well, what we do, using the calculator here again, we say 10 raised to the 4.65 power. 4.65 power equals 44,668.36. But it's reference to a milliwatt. So we have to multiply it times a milliwatt, which is 0 .001. 0 .001 times, and we get 44.67. And see, there's it is right there. There's our 45 watts. The 44.67 and the 45 are the same number. Because a, a gain, a, a power level, excuse me, of 46.5 decibels 46.5 dBm is equivalent to 10 raised to the 4.65 power times the m times 0 .001. That's the math we just did on the calculator and ended up with 44.67. I won't do that again to belabor the point. We get 44.67, which is our 45 watts. Now, let's do it with this one. This one right here would be uh, 27.24 dBm would be equal to 10 raised to the 2.724 power because we're converting the decibels to bells by just moving the decimal place over times 0 .001 <clears throat> and we better get this number right here okay so let's do that one so we'd say in this using this calculator 10 enter uh, uh, 2.724 2.724 raised to that power and then we gotta multiply that times our reference level which is a milliwatt 0 .001, 0 .001 times and we get 0.53 which is equal to 0.53 which is this power level right here that's 0.53 so that's how this goes to that, and this goes to that. So I hope this makes sense. <clears throat> I know there are a number of uh, decibel type uh, YouTube videos out there, but I find them all horribly repetitive and academic. But this is a real world application of it, so I hope this helps.